you played with Rasan Roland Kirk on a few records, and I didn't really know much. I've always heard him, but I didn't know much about him until I saw the documentary about him on Amazon a few months ago. And talk about a an, a talent, and and what was really impressive is his. That guy didn't have the word can't in his vocabulary. And I was curious, is that the same spirit that he exuded as a band leader? Um, yes. Uh, he, he tended to, to speak really loud, you know, which, which commanded everyone's attention. You know? uh, one of the records I made with him that had a great time with him and Al Hibbler on Atlantic Records and Hank Jones. And, and uh, Hank is a very, it's a, it's a, I, I always call him Mr. Jones because he has required that kind of respect from everybody. And because uh, Hank is a low profile person and, and never raises his voice, you know, and, and Rasan was uh, just a little bit excited about the being here with the great Hank Jones. He just kind of kept on going, you know, and, and, and uh, Hank would say, just, just a moment, Mr. Rasan, you know, can we do this just one minute here and I'll show you how I'm playing it. And it was Hank's calming event, calming approach to telling Rasan that his way was okay. But Mr. Jones had another chord for this particular place and that he could demonstrate that, not just tell him. He right. Him, you know, uh, Rasan could kind of step back and he, he began to enjoy the music of Hank Jones, not Rasan just playing the saxophone with Hank Jones. Uh, Rasan was truly an amazing player, an amazing player, and, and a really nice man. Once, once he once he got a chance to just sit down with him, and music was not, not there. It was just he had, he had a broad view of things that somehow we kind of don't see, so to speak, you know. Uh, but Luke Warringham was an interesting another lesson for me. How do you, how do I, respond to a person who's more aggressive than I need to do the best job I can, you know? That's just where they, okay, I can do that. You know, my job is to find the right notes, whatever, however they ask for it. But I do have a limit as to how much I will accept, uh, uh, how much I will accept, uh, uh, how, how much, how well I'll accept the limit of respect that I think I'm due as I'm showing to them. Sure. Now, he never got that part with me. You know, we always, we, you know, I understood he talked a little louder than I'm used to hearing people talk, but it wasn't offensive to me. But there are sessions when you go in there and the band leader, whoever, he, they're so unsure of their presence and they're unsure of who these guys are who now that they've been thrown in to this room with these guys and make their music, you know, and they may have their bass player who's not there. Who's this guy that the producer brings in to, to replace my bass player? And what does he know? You know, who, who does who does he think he is? You know, that's that's that ego thing, and now and that's part of the part of life. And my job is to kind of just kind of tell this person, hey man, I'm not just a guy. I'm the bass player for the next three hours, and I'm my job is to make you sound good. Allow me to do that. 